The biggest mistake I have ever made is let pornography rule my love life. So I'm Matthew Richardson, AKA known as Afro Matt. I travel and teach and preach and work with youth groups as well as kids ministries, um, sports groups, and different organizations all over. So one of my favorite things about the next generation is this generation has so much potential for what God is doing in and through their lives, reaching their friends for the next generation as a whole. But more than that, one of the things I love is being able to connect and call out what God has placed in them. I think we all have a God-given purpose that is so easily missed and it's distracted by things of this world. Um, we're all searching for love ultimately, but we don't know what that looks like. And so in that, we find that in different ways and different avenues. And so a lot of those being lust, uh, sexual immorality and different things that are challenging and taken away from this real idea of what love is. One of the things that uh, I love and what I get to do is I get to sit and listen to people's stories and hear what's going on and I just get to sit and look back on my story and think to the first time I was exposed to pornography, a uh, guy's locker room, um, before we had you know crazy internet on cell phones and all these different things and experiencing this unshakable imagery of what is going on, what is this banter, what is this joking about? And what started out as a joke turned into an addiction. And what's crazy about it is, I would have never thought that I would be that guy um, to go through the motions in this thing that is constantly gravitating and pulling more and more and more and more. Throughout my high school career, you could say, I began to be morphed and shaped by this idea of what love was. Love was a feeling, love was an action, love was this unattainable thing that would constantly have me coming back for more. I remember early on in some of my relationships, my first real dating relationship, you could say, was in high school, and just battling with this comparison and this idea that has come from pornography. This, this ruined skew that had been painted in my brain with these images um, and these thoughts. And so now my relationships I was walking through were tainted by that. And then just even through that next trajectory and the next relationship and now in college and now in my adult life, constantly battling the skew of imagery that had been painted for what love looked like. And I remember one time sitting down and going through and kind of just searching for it. Um, I think with anything that becomes an addiction, it's constantly a battle of going, man, what and how do I get rid of this thing? What can I use to replace it? What can I do to get rid of it? And, you know, going cold turkey for several weeks and then coming back or, or going cold turkey and having a thought and feeling like I failed. I remember kind of walking through that and seeing through and I remember texting a buddy of mine that night and being like, hey, I want to break free of this struggle. I want to break free of this addiction. Like I want to name it um, and claim it. And I want to be able to move forward and move on. And here's the thing. It's not it's not all perfect. It's we're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall back. We're going to fall down. But remembering that our mistakes don't define us, but they help us grow into who God's created us to be. And as long as we're walking in the freedom that God has for us, I think that's where um, we can begin to start the journey. Um, know that, give yourself grace. Like it's not gonna be perfect. Um, it's not gonna be the next day it's all gone. You've never embraced or experienced anything. I think I'd say it's gonna be a continual journey. Like there's still moments where I go, man, like do I, did I have a bad thought? Did I, did I look at something? Did something come across my Instagram? And did I have a thought from that? And like checking myself, but also constantly removing things that are in your life that stir up and cause those struggles or those addictions or things like it's easier said than done but beginning to walk in the freedom and walk in the purpose but also knowing that i have someone walking with me in that that i'm open about it that i think i think anything that you bring to light brings clarity and brings freedom i think that's the biggest biggest part of it is finding someone to walk it out with you and call you higher and not judge you, not allow this sin or this struggle or this addiction to be more than anyone else's. 
um, but to see you for you, to see you for how God sees you and call you out. And so it could be multiple people. For me, it's uh, one of my buddies uh, for a long time uh, named Steven, and we've been on this journey for several years now. Um, and to be able to walk on that journey of just freedom, uh, to feel free to be able to communicate it to someone and truly begin to unpack what love was to reshape, to rewire, to re um, look into my heart and what had been tainted and then begin to walk out and see the change that came in my relationships, to see the change that came um, in my life. And now to be able to go to the next generation and say, hey, you may be searching for all the wrong things in all the wrong places, um, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how far you've gone. It doesn't matter how far you've gotten, but God loves you uh, and there's always a space back for you. There's always room at the table um, and you're never too far gone and you're never too far messed up. So my name is Matt. Thank you for listening to my story on No Gray Areas.